Hello, this is David Ben Ariel, author of Beyond Babylon, Europe's Rise and Fall. I wrote that book some years ago, just had it professionally published though in 2005, but it was available on the internet a long time before then. And this here is a certificate I received from Kibbutz Ramat Yochanan in 1982. That was the very first kibbutz I stayed on out of a total of eight over the years. And it says, this certificate is granted to David Hoover. That used to be my name before I legally changed it in 1989 to David Ben Ariel. As a token of appreciation for having worked and shared with us our kibbutz way of life based on brotherhood and peace. Shalom. Kibbutz Ramat Yochanan. That was October 2nd in 83 they gave this to me. But um, I've since lived on eight of them in total. Everywhere from Stolt Yam, where I studied Hebrew on the Mediterranean, and it's mentioned in Leah Norris's book uh, Exodus, the uh, so called illegal Jewish immigration, Aliyah Beit, was on their beaches, but um, and Chana Senesh was from there, and I also studied at Kibbutz Regavim in Anur Pan, which is an intensive Hebrew course for three months, and then Reshafim near Beit Shan, and Shoval down in the desert in the Negev and Kibbutz Dan up north during Operation Desert Storm and where else? Kibbutz Aramit uh, that was on the border of Lebanon and Ha'on right on the Sea of Galilee and then I finally lived in Jerusalem first time I was in Jerusalem was in 1980 I was only 20 years old and I went with the Worldwide Church of God we went there to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles that was before it became popular as it is now amongst professing Christians. They have their big celebration there now called the Christian Feast of Tabernacles. In Hebrew it's called Sukkot. So I went there for a 10 day whirlwind tour and was glad to finally be able to see many of the sites that I had read about in the Bible all my life. And it brings them to life and if you've never been to Israel I encourage you to go. And I decided I didn't want to just go as a tourist. I wanted to go back and really get a feel for the land and for the people. And the only way I could do that at that time was to volunteer on a kibbutz, which is a collective farm, an agricultural commune. You do anything from pick grapefruits to plant orange trees to work in a chicken incubator or the dining room, wherever they want you to go. And I went there and was able to meet people from all over the world. Some I visited in South Africa, others I've had um, as German roommates, I met them in Frankfurt and an English girl um, that I knew from London. We used to travel together. She ended up marrying one of our Australian roommates who lives in Brisbane now. But uh, I've lived all over Israel and that was my goal before finally settling in Jerusalem. And then when I was in Jerusalem, I was involved with, privileged to be able to be in the demonstrations with the Temple Mount faithful. They call for the Temple Mount to be restored as the Temple Mount, which is logical. It's the Temple Mount, Har Habaya. But presently it's under occupation of foreigners, and there are foreign objects there known as mosques on the site of where the Holy Temple stood twice. And biblical prophecy says, and Jews and Christians both know and believe, that the Third Temple will soon be. I had an article published in Jerusalem based on that faith, based on that understanding and submission to the Word of God that says there will be a third temple. And in that same article that was published in Jerusalem and then read throughout all Israel and now the world, I also called upon Israel to remove the mosque and to build the temple. I didn't call upon any vigilantes, I didn't call upon any individual, but I called upon the Israeli government. It's their responsibility to remove the mosque and to ensure that Christians and Jews can pray or read the Bible up there in peace which presently they can't do. Even though it's against Israeli law, the Israeli officials look the other way. Well, I wrote an article highlighting that plight of the Temple Mount suffering under Nazi Muslim occupation, and I warned about a German Vatican plot to take over Jerusalem. And that's really picked up steam in the last couple of months, especially with the Pope's visit coming up. The collaboration of certain Israelis with the Vatican to sell out Jerusalem and backstab Israel is going on and it's been foretold and others have also told about it.
But when I was working at the Palm Hostel, a youth hostel just outside the Damascus Gate, where I used to work, two undercover Israeli agents came in and said they wanted to talk to me about my visa. I knew it wasn't about my visa, especially since it was around 5 o'clock and their office hours were finished. And they wanted me to go with them, and I said, you can ask me any questions right here. But they insisted I go with them, and then they interrogated me for six and a half hours, six different men, about the Temple Mount and trying to determine, and they should have ascertained, that I didn't pose any threat, that I have my strong beliefs, and that I am outspoken, but that I'm harmless. But instead they threw me in jail in a horrible place built by the Turks called the Russian Compound, and after three weeks they deported me. And I plan on going back this year, Bezrat Hashem, with the help and grace of God. But you, uh, some people on the internet say that I was a terrorist, that I was involved in a plot to blow up the mosque. The Jerusalem Post had on the front page uh, an article where that was questioned, but it was never confirmed because there's not any truth to it whatsoever. And then to add insult to injury, Gerald Fleury of the Philadelphia Church of God that I used to be a member of before it became too cultish, and they also didn't want me writing a book not being a minister, not that God requires that, he took out a full page ad this last year and in there he was slamming me basically giving every innuendo that I was a terrorist. And apparently some are terrorized by the plain truth of the Bible and history that I dare to share. But you can read all about the German Vatican plot and the plight of the Temple Mount suffering under Muslim occupation where Christians and Jews aren't able to pray or read the Bible at my website davidbenariel.org and check it out and let me know what you think. Shalom.